Welcome back. In this next chapter, we're going to take a look at resolving the issue of a sudden increase in your utility bills. Thank you. And the issue of your limo company charging you more than the quoted rate. I'm not going to let this spoil my dinner. To begin addressing your rate questions, rule one, hold on to all your bills for service and receipts if you've already paid. Without a bill or receipt, it's going to be very hard to file a complaint against the company. Rule two, check the CPUC website. As we've already seen, it contains a lot of information about handling your problem. In fact, there's a link for filing a complaint. If you don't have a computer, simply call the CPUC. They'll send you forms and information. For utilities, call 800 649-7570. Household Goods Movers, 800-366-4782. Passenger Carriers, 800-894-9444. Typically, an informal complaint is made if you feel a charge is incorrect or service has been unsatisfactory or unsafe. In fact, most complaints to the CPUC are informal complaints. For the utility issue, the CPUC website indicates that you should contact your utility company and try to solve the problem with them. Often just a phone call resolves the issue. No, there hasn't been any increased activity in our home from April to June to warrant a $300 increase in our electric bill. Okay. And your name is? Right, and when will someone get back to me? Great, thank you. The service rep said that from the records, the utility bill is correct, but I disagree. I think I've been overcharged and I'm gonna file a complaint with the CPUC. I can file it online and attach copies of my high electric bills. If you don't have a computer, you can simply mail a letter to the CPUC. You need to include your name, your address, a contact number, the name and address of your utility company, your account number, and a brief description of the problem. Mail your complaint to the Consumer Affairs Office at the CPUC. For the limo rate problem, the CPUC website lists the number to call, as well as email and street addresses. And there's a passenger carrier complaint form that can be downloaded to fill out and return to the CPUC. The form is very straightforward, requesting your contact information, information about the company, and a description of the problem. The bold type here indicates that you should include copies of any bills, receipts, and other documentation, which goes back to rule number one, keep all your documentation. Rule number three, copy everything. Never send original bills or receipts, send copies. And this complaint form about the limo charge goes to the CPUC. Hopefully the charges will be reversed. Now what about that utility complaint form I filled out on the CPUC website? To find out more about the informal complaint process, let's go to our ever helpful friend Barbara Rogers. Barbara? Hi Tomas, and greetings to you. To discuss with us the process of making an informal complaint is Harold Williams, who is a supervisor in the Consumer Affairs Branch at the CPUC. Welcome, Harold. Hi, Barbara. I'm heading over to the CPUC to talk to Harold Williams. In the meantime, take it away, Barbara. Thanks, Tomas. So we have two problems that can possibly qualify as informal complaints, the sudden increase in a utility bill and the disparity between a quoted rate for a limo service and the actual charge. Now, Tomas has followed all the steps on the website. What happens now? Tomas has done exactly what we ask of consumers who contact us and it makes the informal complaint process more efficient. Let me begin by saying that it's the position of the CPUC that Californians have a right to a safe, reliable utility service and help with questions and disputes. We handle complaints involving phone, electric, natural gas, and water services that are regulated by the CPUC. When you contact us, you want to make sure that your service is regulated by the CPUC. You can do so by looking at the back of your bill, or phoning, or just writing. If we do regulate your utility, you may file an informal complaint, like Tomas did. On the website, click on the File a Complaint link, 
and the complaint form comes right up. The basic form asks for your contact and utility service information and a brief description of the problem, as well as a response from the utility. You may also attach any supporting documents with your complaint. Once you've completed it, you can submit the form online. That looks streamlined and user-friendly. But this is our goal, and of course, if you have any questions, call us, and we're here to help. Also, if there are documents that you can't attach online, then mail copies to us. Be sure to include your name, account number, and contact information on all documents. Once the complaint is received, we send a letter to the consumer acknowledging that we received the complaint form and any other materials included. The letter will also list a case number. You'll want to keep this letter with your other papers because you'll refer to this number in all communications with us. And to avoid having your utility service disconnected, you may send us the amount in dispute. Based on the outcome of the complaint, the funds will be either returned to you or given to the utility. But you want to continue to pay your utility bills during the complaint process. Hi, Harold. Here's my check for the disputed amount. I'll deposit it into an account until your complaint is resolved. Your utility company then may contact you to discuss the complaint. We never did that. No, I even hang out my laundry. We will also confer with the utility company and have a manager take a closer look at your complaint. Often the manager will contact you to discuss the matter further. Your bill may be corrected or the manager may explain the utility's position. After this, the utility reports back to us. Having looked over your information and the utility's response, we will then give our position. And how long does this take? Well, depending on the complexity of each case, it could take a few months. But during this time, Tomas should continue paying his utility bills. Well, what if I have a question about the decision or I'm not satisfied with it? Well, to appeal, you must contact us within 15 days of receiving notice of our position. You may have a consumer affairs supervisor review the investigation, and we may ask for additional information. If a consumer affairs doesn't change its position, you may consider filing a formal complaint. Good, we'll be covering formal complaints in the next chapter, but let's address a few more points about informal complaints. You can make an informal complaint to the Consumer Affairs Branch about your phone, electric, natural gas, and water services, provided they are regulated by the CPUC. Now you can phone them at 800-649-7570 for assistance in any language. Now you can make an informal complaint to the Transportation Enforcement Section about a household goods moving company or a passenger carrier, like a limo service. For transportation complaints, if you were billed for services you did not receive, or billed for more services than were specified in your written quote, we will look into getting your money refunded. We will respond to your complaint by return mail. If you have a moving company complaint, call us at 1-800-366 4782. Or if you have a passenger carrier complaint, call 1 800 894 9444. Call us or write. We're here to help. Indeed. The CPUC is here to help you with your questions and complaints. Thank you, Harold, for explaining the informal complaint process. You're very welcome. And thanks to all of you, residents and small business owners, for your interest. To continue getting assistance with your questions, go to the main menu and access specific chapters. I'm Barbara Rogers, looking forward to seeing you soon. And I'm Tomas Roman with information from the website and the CPUC about informal complaints. Join me in the next chapters as we continue to get your questions and complaints addressed. <laughs>